And welcome back to Sunday Square Off. We're taking a closer look at the most intriguing races in the 2018 elections, and we're starting a few rungs below the top of the ticket. Diane Douglas, school superintendent. She lost her primary, er, lost, uh, uh, she is out after just one term. She lost her primary. Political newcomer Kathy Hoffman stunned David Shapiro on the de Democratic side. Former congressman and candidate for governor Frank Riggs defeated Bob Branch by less than 400 votes on the Republican side. Bob Branch, probably the farthest right candidate in any primary uh, this, uh, you know, this uh, summer. Uh, it's a down ballot race. Riggs versus Kathy Hoffman, first run for office. He's a former congressman. How does this play out? I see it as a clear choice, frankly. You've got Kathy Hoffman, who won in an upset, frankly, over Shapira. She is a school teacher. She is a public school teacher. This is her background. This is what she cares about. And then you've got Frank Riggs, the former congressman from California, who came to Arizona, frankly, to get into the charter school business. So you've got the charter school angle, the school choice angle versus public education. And I think Hoffman has got a great chance of winning this seat. All right, clear contrast there. Clear contrast, but not for the reasons Chris says. Hoffman might be the most liberal Democrat nominee in the state. Um, I think once voters see what she's about, see her positions on any number of issues, they'll probably end up uh, pulling a lever for Riggs. All right, clear contrast for a very different reason. In the Secretary of State's race, another incumbent ousted in the GOP primary, Michelle Reagan. She's gone after one term. Democratic State Senator Katie Hobbs faces wealthy business owner and political newcomer Steve Gaynor on the Republican side. A reminder, Secretary of State is the state's top elections official and first in line to su succeed the governor if he leaves office. Gaynor wrote a check for $1.5 million for TV ads in the primary. Chris, can he spend his way into that office? I don't think he can. I don't think he can. Um, for Republicans, if there is a seat we will lose come November, it's probably Secretary of State. Katie Hobbs, not the strongest candidate for the Democrats, but at the same point, we don't have our strongest candidate either. I think Gaynor is inexperienced, will probably end up shining through between now and November. Chris? We are in total agreement. Um, <laughs> Katie, okay, let's move on. <laughs> Katie Hobbs, I think, is has got the legislative experience, the minority leader in the Senate. Um, she, if you want somebody that close to the governor's uh, office with, that could succeed a governor that tends to leave in Katie the middle Hobbs. of their second term, <laughs> um, I, they, the electorate will take Katie Hobbs, in my opinion, over Steve Gaynor, who we really don't know. And, and I think he came across as very right wing in the primary. Um, I think the folks will go with Katie it's Hobbs. It's a race where both parties probably wish they could do better. All right, we have a historic race for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated by Jeff Flake, Democratic Congress. Kirsten Cinema of Phoenix versus Republican Congressman Congresswoman Martha McSally of Tucson. It guarantees Arizona will be represented by a woman in the U.S. Senate for the first time ever. Now, McSally's campaign seems to think they can win by showing 15-year-old photos of Kirsten Cinema in a tutu. It's going back to the, the, the playbook we've seen in every Republican Correct. race against Cinema. Is it going to work this time too? Well, or, well so I should say, is, is it going to work for the first time this time? It's tough to say. This is going to be a very, very competitive race that ends up a point or two in either direction. Personally, I think Martha McSally will ultimately prevail. Kristen Sinema has been a more moderate member of Congress last few years, but the reality is a lot of people are convinced, and based on her prior record, that this is more of an act. And the real Kristen Sinema is pink tutu, Prada socialist, and uh, is just telling voters what they want to hear. So she's going to have to answer for the entirety of her very, very liberal record before she left uh, to go to D.C. Chris. What I think is interesting about this race is it, the money. I mean, they are going to spend a fortune. $20 million dollar campaigns, outside money from both <laughs> parties is flooding yep. into Arizona. And they're all so talking points oriented, these two candidates. Neither of them want to talk to the media. They don't want to give interviews. Who knows if we'll see debates. Um, that's not good for the system, frankly. Um, but I've always felt that Kirsten Sinema will be the next U.S. Senator, and that's who I'm voting for. Real quickly, governor's race, Doug Ducey versus David Garcia. Ducey, ton of money on his side. Garcia, not much. From my perspective, it's hard to know what Garcia even stands for in this race. How does this play out? 15 seconds, please. I think uh, Garcia is very close to Ducey. I think it will be a close race. Um, I think there will be some independent expenditures that will come Garcia's way because it's so close. It'll come down to education, and Garcia has that issue uh, 
in his lap, in my opinion, and Ducey has failed with regards to public education, that could be the deciding issue. Chris Baker. I'll make this short. No amount of independent expenditures are going to change the outcome in this race. Uh, Doug Ducey will win, probably win fairly easily, and, uh, you know, have four more years as governor.